Nobody understands intensity, going to total failure. Nobody's eating enough. It's just, it's, I, I look at what's going on and I'm not sure whether it's because the magazines don't exist anymore. And I tell you, you know, you talked about intensity. What I'm seeing now is I just think that the issue at hand, and I've been criticized by the younger generation of bodybuilders, that I, I think that drugs are being replaced with hard work. Reverse. Bobby Robinson trades. Right hard now, hard work is getting replaced by drugs. Yes, I'm sorry. Hard work is being replaced by drugs. Hey, let me uh, take one second here to let you guys know that my products, the Titan Crew, are available over at Walmart. You got the pump product, get that focus on the workout, the test booster, bump it naturally, and then the joint support. You gotta keep the joints healthy, that way you can train for a lifetime. I wanna take that one minute, let's get back into the podcast, thanks again. You guys will, in the future, understand why the shirts go along with the individuals that I do interviews with. It'll be a cool, cool kind of thing for you guys to put together why I do that. Because um, today's guest is Rich Gaspari, and you're in the health and fitness world. There's, there's not enough I can say about this man that gives him a just opening. It's like him and Lee Haney and these guys. I know that people know about the titles and, and what he's done in the industry, but do you know what he's done outside of the industry? He motivated me to train like an absolute beast. He motivated me that I could chase my dream. He motivated me to live the life I've been able to live because of his personality, the way he trained meant more to me than whatever he did in a show. Lee Haney's the same thing. How they trained and how they interacted um, was more impressive to me, which I didn't realize until years later that it stimulated the the guy, I guess you would say, that athlete in me, that it's like, these are the kind of individuals I want to be around. These are the kind of individuals I want to talk smack with and lift with. And if I ain't manning up, they're the kind of guys that will tell you, you ain't doing well enough. You can push yourself harder. And man, if you guys don't, if you could grasp that earlier in life, even though subconsciously, I guess I knew that. What did they say? Um, subconsciously. So I didn't realize that's what I loved. That's I love the the battles, the mental battles, the the banter. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger came up to me the other day, and the crew is lifting, and Jeffrey was there. He can he can kind of testify to this, but he came up and he goes. The first thing he said was, "Do you remember?" Um, oh, he told us the story about how they lifted back in the day. That was the first thing. He didn't come up and yeah. watch us lift. And he goes, this is how you do it. The guys all together and girls and talking smack and pushing each other and getting into the workout. And that's why you like to go to the gym because it's, it's you're getting together with your friends to better yourself, but in a fun way. It's like it's not like going to the bar and doing your thing to pick up on girls. Um, you're so set on, on you'll get the girls later, you know, <laughs> and you just – get yourself in the right mindset in the right training better yourself and the girls will come i know that's a little little extreme for you guys today but we're going to put that up for you guys later to understand the whole philosophy behind the podcast and why i bring on the guests i get to bring on would be a cool thing today we're going to kind of go over intensity so you guys can see this we're going to go over Nutrition. I would like to go over nutrition, though, of what he did as a teenager and in his 20s. I think that's really important for you guys out there listening to this because you could watch what he does now at his age and how he maintains or gets better um, at what he's doing now relative to what he did as a teenager. This is going to be really helpful for you guys because I think for all of you, you're going to want to watch the full episode of this because of the fact that this is how you're going to want to do the nutrition. It's not going to be when he was on the Olympia stage. It's going to be prior to that. Do I need to slap you and get you all excited today? I need some freaking intensity, kid. I'm intense. I'm ready. Dude. <laughs> I love it. All right. So here's the big thing today, if we can. Uh, mm -hmm. I freaking loved 
what you put up the other day where you were talking about uh, how guys were eating like 2,000 calories. And this is the off season, I'm assuming. Yeah. That's why it got you so – and and I can so understand why. And, hey, I want to get jacked, and I'm eating 2,000 calories. Mona's sitting right next to me. She eats 4,000 calories. What yeah. are you guys doing? It's like – so I'd love to go over that. I'd love to go over uh, intensity mm -hmm. and how today is a snowflake mentality – you know, with the textbook, hey, you got to, this is where you should train. Don't go to fatigue. You got to be right in this range. And then you're all golden. And and also, and also you get like beat up on your form and like, you know, people know you can, you can do a movement strict. And then if you do a little bit of a cheating motion, like you start going heavier right away, you don't know how to do your form. <laughs> and I posted, uh, do you guys like cheat curls? And I, I did cheek. I was doing curls like with 200 pounds yeah. and uh, just cheat curls. And I'm like, do you guys like cheat curls? And they're like, no, we don't cheat on anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> that's, that's the name of the exercise. It doesn't mean you're cheating. <laughs> and it's like you and I grew up with Arnold doing that. I know. And it, I mean, it, you know, cheat curls or, you know, like any movement when you get to the last part, like, I mean, I used to watch, like we, we should talk about it on the show, but guys like Tom Platts and at the end, you know, going to total failure and then still continually using that muscle, even though you're, you're doing a cheat movement, you're still training that muscle. You may be using other muscles, but you're still working that muscle to total failure. And that's what people don't understand. And nobody understands intensity going to total failure. Nobody's eating enough. It's just, it's, I, I look at what's going on and I'm not sure whether it's because the magazines don't exist anymore but we'll talk about it. Let's let's go over this. All right. So the first thing I want to say is because we were talking, because my first training partner in Venice was Tom Plaz. So it's, I fully understand. I don't know if it's frustration with you, but it is for me because it's like, I want you to learn what worked for me and then what didn't work. And that way you can be better than the the Michael Hearn, the Rich Gaspari. The, if they listen to what you did right, yeah. and bypass and i don't it's it's a it's a frustrating thing that they don't listen but for you what is it that sent you off on a rant the other day when it comes to calories well you know i train in the gym and and you know i i always you know people always come up to me for guidance to talk to me about you know what to do or how to diet and i had this one girl who was she was basically off season and she was trying to gain lean muscle and she was on 12 to 1400 calories, 50 grams of carbs. The guy was making her do like water cycles, which I'm like, why the frick are you cycling, drinking water? Just drink, you know, a gallon to two gallons of water. She was drinking up to a gallon and then going back down to a pint and cycling water. And I'm like, and hold on, hold this? on. In the off season, she's yes. cycling water. Yes, yeah, cycling water. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I mean, I could see maybe cutting water right before a show, you know, but there's no reason to cycle water in an off season. And and I'm going, you're on so little calories that you can't, first of all, you can't train intensely. If you're not eating and you're not you're having fuel from food, there's no way that you're going to be able to train intensely to gain muscle mass. And if you're not eating enough sufficient calories, you're not going to grow muscle. You have to eat to grow muscle. And it's the right, of course, it's the right foods to eat. It's, you know, looking at your macronutrients, staying away from refined sugars, you know, and, and just eating, you know, at, like, you know, when you and I are, you know, doing this in our young age, we learn that, you know, through wheat earth to eat at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And some of these people are eating very little protein, they're thinking carbs are evil. Carbs are evil. And I've never believed that carbs were evil. I mean, eating complex carbs, you know, they convert to glucose that then get stored as glycogen in the muscle. And these guys are just not eating carbs. This whole thing about going on these keto diets. I mean, I'm not saying keto diets are wrong. For certain people, they do work. Um, but most of the time, keto diets are not a proper diet for people to use. I've always used macronutrients that were very close, 35% protein, 45% carbs, 20% fat has been my mainstay in staying in shape and eating, you know, complex carbs, a little bit of fruit, and then mostly fibrous vegetables that I would eat 
proteins always consisted of low fat proteins from chicken, fish, turkey, you know, eating, you know, fish, salmon, whey protein. That was my diet, you know, when I was a kid till in now in my late 50s and I'm still eating this way and staying, you know, staying in, in good shape that I'm trying to continue to stay in good shape and do whatever I can. Yeah. Continue to stay in shape. Okay. So th there, yeah, it's, it's, it's an odd thing for you and I can, I, I'm going to jump the subject for one second because I, I want the listeners to understand what they're the, the mindset of who they're listening to right now. For some reason, uh, it still hasn't happened to me. Um, but it seems to happen to a lot of people. Stay with me here. It, there's the, there's the moment of uh, we're born gladiators and you and I, since we were teenagers, it didn't matter how hot it was in Jersey and stuff. You'd go still train regardless. And you had to get in that battle and you push it regardless who shows up. Right. It, well, I, I went even further, you know, you, you lived in warm climate. I lived in cold climate for me. If there was four foot of snow, I dig my way out and walk to the gym to get to the gym. And I always say like, you know what? And, and no disrespect to California, but, you know, I was this guy with this mindset. That said, I, don't worry. I'm a Washington State. Same thing. <laughs> so so when, I, when I lived in, you know, when I lived in New Jersey and it was like snowing and, and, and nobody could travel to the gym, you know, the gym owner gave me a key. And no matter what, I got to that gym training because I go, I was telling myself, there's people in California right now in the sun, you know, enjoying the hot weather. And I'm going to go out there in 20 below zero, get to the gym no matter what and train. Because that was my mindset. I said, I'm going to the gym no matter what. I'm not missing a workout. If there was no way I was going to travel and there was a blizzard, there was a way that I was going to get to the gym and travel. But that was my mindset. So, so and I said, when I moved to California... I'm going to eat these guys alive. Yep. <laughs> so then, then I'm correct to understand that it was the mindset and the added uh, F you kind of thing where it's like, I don't care that you got sunshine. I'll still train in this and that will make me mentally stronger than you boys out there. Exactly. And, is that right? Okay, good. Cause that's going in the almost, way almost like, almost like Rocky when he fought, you know, Drago, you remember he was out in the snow yeah. and he was doing that, that kind of thing. Okay, so then let's jump forward. For some reason, especially in bodybuilding, sorry guys, but there seems to be they go, they go, they go, they hit whatever it is they wanted, and then maybe it worked out for them, maybe it didn't, but then they they go completely the other side. I don't do this no more. I'm I'm, I'm I train moderate. I just do machines. It's the the hunger is gone. But it's gone to an extreme amount to where they almost say everything I did back then as a teenager mentally and, and my 20s and 30s was incorrect. This is a much better position of me being content. You're not that. Am I correct to understand you're not the guy that's content going, hey, cool, I'll, I'll phone it in. I won't train it as intense. I won't diet as intense. I, you're not competing at the Mr. Olympia, so why train so hard? I do it because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy, you know, pushing my body the best I can. You know, I'm, I, you know, this year I'll be 60. So I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a spring chicken, but I still enjoy going to the gym five days a week, hitting it hard. You know, the first thing I do in the morning is I get up at 530 in the morning and I get to the gym and I train. And, you know, I always challenge my body to be able to continue, you know, training to intensity. You know, when I was in my 20s, I destroyed the weights because I just love to train. You know, I'd go through two training partners because I like to train really hard, long drop sets, supersets, you know, descending sets, whatever I could do, negatives. I still do the same thing. Can I go as hard? Maybe not as hard in my 20s, but I'm still pushing. You go as hard as you can for where you're at. Exactly where I'm at. And I'm still training with guys 20 years younger than me and pushing them to say, how the hell are you doing this? And with no injuries, you know, people watch me sometimes. You know, I push myself. I'm still really strong on legs and I can still push hard. You know, unfortunately, I had, a, you know, from lifting, you know, from competitive days, I had herniated disc in my neck. So my upper body is not as strong, but I can still push it as hard as I can. And I still do. And, and I'm not injuring myself. I see people, you know, on Instagram saying, you know, you're training incorrectly and you're going to hurt yourself. Dude, I'm in my I'm, I'm 60. I'm not going to hurt myself. I know how to train. 
I know what I'm doing when it comes to my body, just like you know what you're doing. And if you could push yourself to a level that you're not going to hurt yourself and push your body to, you know, to failure, you know, I still enjoy doing it. For me, training is like, is like my yoga. You know, people that do yoga, for me, training in the gym, I don't bring my phone to the gym. I, you know, I sometimes like do a video or a photo that my training partner will do, but I'm not in there texting people when I'm in the gym. And if I have any training partners work with me, if I see them texting someone, I get rid of them. I see you're coming in here to train. You could take videos uh, you know, of yourself, but you're not going to sit here and go to the gym and then sit there and have conversations with people. This is something that you're going to do for an hour and a half and you're going to go balls to the wall out to train your body. Okay. So I just wanted the viewers to understand that you and I have this, uh, we'll call it an issue with not being done. I'm yeah. not done with that battle. I'm not done with going to the gym and phoning it. I'm not done with going, Hey, let's drop it. I train today as hard as I possibly can for where I'm at as I did when I was 16. Um, and you're right. It, it's interesting to see society look at you, someone that's done it. You're a master at the craft. You've spent so many years doing this. You understand how your body functions in a form for you and the speed that you can move. And you're safe. Um, I just wanted the viewers to understand that. So this won't be one of those podcasts of how can I, how can I just kind of coast out? We're not coasting out. I guess you would say that we're going with our boots on. I still go, you know, as hard as I can, but you know what, you know, being older, I always get checkups to make sure, you know, that I'm not, you know, hurting myself, which I'm not, you know, I do a lot of things where I go to chiropractors, I, I go on tables to get my, you know, to keep my, my uh, discs breathing. Yeah. So you know, I go into, you know, traction to be able to, because, you know, with all the training, you, you can have compression. And when you get older, you want to prevent that compression. So I do traction to open up my discs. You know, I check my blood levels. I, I do everything possible, Mike, to make sure that I stay healthy and, you know, follow this anti-aging lifestyle. Because I believe in it. I, I feel I'll be doing this until I'm 90 to 100 because I enjoy doing it. You know, I was watching, you know, I was at the gym and the TV was running. And there was a, there was a guy that was 59 years old. And this guy looked like with a cane, he needed assisted living. And I'm looking at this guy, I go, I'm the same age as this guy. And I'm over here pushing these two guys 20 years younger than me. And I'm making him cry. And I'm seeing this guy and I'm like, this poor guy, you know, what did he do wrong? And, you know, it's unfortunate because there are some people that things happen to them and they, you know, they age and they need, they need help. And, and I just believe that the way you and I live this healthy lifestyle of eating properly, training properly, you know, we still work hard. We do everything to extremes, and that's what makes us above the rest. Yeah, I, I I love talking to you because you're not much older than me, and and we were both in the in the industry so young. Yeah. And and I love this. I'm not. You know, it's just being on this road with individuals at that level that are pushing it like you or Robbie Robinson, my training partner, and 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 seeing Tom Plaza last month. It's just it's so fun to see the hunger is still alive and the, the passion for what we do. It's our meditation. And you're I agree with you 100 percent. It's like the yoga. We go into the gym and that's our yoga. That's our meditation time. And we love it. Um, and it's being safe. So just for you guys at home, you can do this. And like you were talking about stretching out the bag, chiropractic, obviously we're doing a lot more at this stage to keep us because life is life and skip working out, just being on this planet breaks you down a bit. Yep. And for us to keep going to the chiropractor and massages and stuff is smart for anybody and everybody. And I love that you're doing blood work, checking on the heart, testing everything that you possibly can. And again, I, I recommend that stuff. Mostly, I lost my dad very young to a silly cancer that it could have been prevented if he found out early enough. Um, and it's just because of that old school mentality of guys going, I don't need to check. I don't need to do blood work. I don't need to check on the heart. I'm good. And, and that's the thing, you know, you can you can bypass a lot of the deaths that happen in the United States. If you if you check, first of all, um, you check your prostate after you get it to age 50. 
My dad died. You just like your dad passed away. I don't know what he died from. My dad died. My dad died from prostate cancer. Same. And it could have been, it could have been prevented just by doing a test. I get my prostate checked every six months. You know, I have PSA done to make sure that there's nothing going on, and I'm and it's totally normal. Um, checking your heart. You want to make sure that you check your heart because even if you're doing everything right, there are things that happen. You know where it's genetic. You yep. can have problems with hardening of the arteries. And I and I had actually issues with hardening of the arteries. Now I'm taking all um, preventative things to help me, you know, taking, you know, I found out through cardiologists to take vitamin K2. I take like 200 micrograms of K2, which helps get rid of the calcium deposits yep. in the arteries. Vitamin D, really important. Omega-3, really important. You know, doing cardiovascular training, very important. And I'm doing all these things to prevent my, you know, from things happening to my heart that if I just didn't pay attention to it and didn't get blood work done, you know, I, I'm using um, things to help me lower cholesterol. You know, sometimes even as you age, even eating perfectly, your cholesterol yep. levels can go up. You want to make sure your HDL is high above 40, 50, and you want to make sure, sure your LDL is low, you know, below 90. So I've been able to do all that to make sure that I have, you know, my blood work comes out perfectly. I'm doing all preventative measures to stay healthy. So if you can check your heart, you know, and, and check your prostate and, and just get checkups, you know, when you get past 50, because unfortunately your body does sometimes start to yeah. break down, you know? Um, so it's really important that I tell people you can prevent, there's a lot of preventative things you can do. Like I said, if your dad died of prostate cancer, so did mine. It, it's, you know, and if he would have just had prostate checks, he would have been, he, he would have lived longer, you know, from, but he didn't check it. And because back in the day, nobody checked, you know, their prostate, you know, tough guys, tough guys, uh, doctors weak. We don't do that. Yeah. Like, so for everybody at home, he didn't even say testosterone. I wish you guys would understand when you get your blood checked, just cause you're in the fitness world, you assume um, you're doing blood work. It's only for your testosterone. It's yeah. not guys. Yeah. It's the whole thing. You're not going to do what Rich does from a teenager to now unless you're healthy and working through it and, and this kind of intensity. And same thing for me. You guys got to go get your blood work. And I, I go through Transcend, and I'm testing something like you just talked about. No matter what, age is age. Yep. And so there's things like cholesterol and stuff. And so I'm testing with foods and supplementation on what I can do to make sure the cholesterol stays uh, in a safe position and stuff like that. So it's kind of fun for you and I, at this stage, we get to train and eat to play with numbers instead of our, just our body and, and shape our body. And another test you guys, you know, when you get past 45 is, is check your colon, you know, colon cancer, very preventative cancer that all you got to do is just get a colon check and you can prevent that cancer. If there's polyps growing, you can get them removed and prevent cancer. And talking about blood work, Mike, I just, I just posted about, that I had been taking testosterone and, you know, people get demonized taking testosterone, but I've been taking testosterone for 10 years and I feel great. The thing is, is I do get my, my blood checked. I am not taking, you know, I'm not sitting there taking testosterone to go five times above normal levels. <laughs> right. My testosterone level is within normal levels of, of a male. Mine were too, mine were too low. So I went on testosterone to get me at, you know, an 800 level between 600 and 800 to 900 total. And then people don't understand. They also need to check their free testosterone. That's, and that's, if you have too high of sex hormone binding globulin or too high albumin, your, your free testosterone is going to be very low. So even if you have a high testosterone level and your free testosterone is low, then you're really not going to have, you know, uh, satisfactory effects of what testosterone can do. What does testosterone do if you have a normal level? Not, not sitting there Through doing the like professional bodybuilders that are, you know, that have like five, six times above normal. What that will do is like, first of all, you'll have a great mindset. You know, I don't have any type of depression. Um, you know, you'll lower your body fat, increase lean muscle mass, feel strong, energetic. All these things are for me, of what been able testosterone's been able to do for me. So, you know, I sat there and did a post and people go, what about your prostate? What about your heart? And if you have all those, those, those health, um, those health things checked, 
and you're 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 yeah. there supervised by a doctor, there's not going to be any problems. And you know, I I go to you said Transcend. I go to Peak Form, is another company that I use, and it's been great for me. I've been I feel great, you know, doing it right now. I want to take a second from my show to say thank you to one of our sponsors, Transcend. This is the health and wellness company that my family has chosen to work with. They get your blood work done so you understand what is going on inside. We might look good on the outside, but you never know what's going on. So that's who I'm recommending for you guys out there. Get on over to Transcend. Get your blood work done today. Make sure you're healthy and stay in the game. I love that. And and again, I think it's just like the guy that goes, Rich, you're training wrong. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay, stop. You don't know much. It's the same thing you're saying. Is like It seems like society just goes, um, you're, you're going to uh, TRT. Oh, my gosh. You're going to compete at the Olympia, the Masters Olympia. Is that what you're doing, Rich? Yeah, yeah. What, 1,500 T levels? It's like, r- relax, dude. Relax. No, you're just taking a healthy dose so you can keep at a healthy level so you don't break down the body. And I think that's exactly. one of the big things. Men don't know that a couple of those problems with men is low T levels, which yes. cause the problems. And and for my dad was one of those things. Um, my dad, the same thing. And, you know, when you look at, you know, I studied because my dad got prostate cancer. I really studied, you know, the prostate. And everyone who gets prostate cancer has below normal testosterone levels. You don't see a young kid get prostate cancer. You know, that's the thing. So, and you know, if you go to the wrong urologist, they're going to tell you uh, testosterone is going to cause cancer. It does right. not cause, it does not cause prostate cancer. If you have prostate cancer, yes, and you're taking testosterone, then you could have a bad effects. But if you are normal and you do not have cancer, which you can know by having yourself tested regularly, you know, by a urologist, you're not going to have problems. And I think with healthy levels of testosterone, it's been proven by doctors that healthy levels of testosterone will prevent getting prostate cancer. Yeah, I think that's, I hope they learn more and more and they understand and keep an open mind about that stuff because you and I both lost our dads that way. Guys, I don't care. And I never have. I don't care if what you do, just be healthy. And so Mm -hmm. if you are 35 or 40 and you got low T levels, be healthy, see a doctor. And maybe you have to do something like T um, to set it in the right range so you can be healthier. And again, like you said, what does it do? Clear mind, uh, a better body, better function. And you and I at this stage is all about not the longevity of life, but the quality of life that we're living so we could be freaking animals because you and I are and Robbie Robinson and we're not done training and being beasts in the gym. So I I totally agree with you. It's it's not about longevity. It's long about longevity, but quality of life. If you can live a better quality of life, be able to do all the things that you did, you know, in your earlier years, you know, you know, be have vitality, you know, you know, having, you know, sex with your wife or your girlfriend and, you know, training in the gym, you know, getting up early, training, doing activities. If you could do all this, then you're living a great, you know, you're living a great life. Being able to think clearly, you know, I, I saw a post um, with the guy who owns Amazon. Um, uh, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. And you saw a picture before and after. Yeah. And you know that he's doing something because all of a sudden the guy is jacked. So they're talking about that, you know, Jeff Bezos is not now on TRT. So, I mean, you and I can talk about this, though. You and I can talk about these guys that are so successful. And that's I mean, he's one of the richest men in the world. (laughs) They're so successful that when they get to that point, now they're going, "Okay, great. But I need to be healthy and active and, 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 and try to get that get rid of that dad bod. Yeah. And, and I think people don't realize at a young age, they go, no, I just want the money, money, money. Trust me, at one point, that's going to flip on you. No matter how much money you want, you want the other side. You want to be Rich Gaspari in the gym at 59 years old being a freaking animal. And, and that's more important to him than his billions. And I tell you, you know, you talked about intensity. What I'm seeing now is I just think that the issue at hand, and I've been criticized by the younger generation of bodybuilders, that I, I think that drugs are being replaced with hard work when you look at how you train 
Reverse. Robbie Robinson trades. Right hard now, work is getting replaced by drugs. Yes, I'm sorry. Hard work is being replaced by drugs. They, they think that there's a magic pill or there's a drug to take, and you come up with these. I don't even know. Listen, Mike, if you ask me today's regimen of, you know, of, of anabolic steroids, what they take, I, I couldn't even tell you because it's a totally different world in what they're taking, but they're taking massive doses and then they're replacing using steroids to replace the hard work. And I still believe that when you look at today's bodybuilders, I don't want to like criticize them to say, I mean, they're, they're massive, but do they have the quality? If you go back and look at the quality of bodybuilders back in the eighties, nineties, they had better quality when, you know, I was comparing a Ronnie Coleman who worked his ass off and like nobody worked out as hard as than a Ronnie Coleman. Um, but you looked at his physique. I mean, this guy was 300 pounds, ripped to shreds. And you looked at, say, Dorian Yates, the same thing, you know, in the high 200s, you know, almost 300, ripped to shreds. You're looking at guys today, and they just don't have that quality of muscle. They all look like they're two weeks out. I think they're just filling themselves up too much, and they're worried about what they look like. They're worried about what the scale says more than worrying about the quality of muscle. And, you know, I criticize that because I want it to change. I want today's pro bodybuilders to be better than I was. I want them to be better. And, and they are bigger, which is great. But are they better? You know, for me, I don't feel they're better. And, and part of the reason is I think we're living in a, in a society and culture that people want the easy way out. I'm, and, and it's not just bodybuilding. It's overall life. If you look at people, they don't want, you know, you look at today, there's a lot of jobs out there. People don't want to work. You know, there's a lot of, you know, there's there's so much to do out there. People want to do the least amount. Everyone feels entitled. And I think that's the problem what's going on with society. So it's got into like our sport of bodybuilding, where it's the same thing that happened. This new generation of bodybuilders that are coming up, you know, don't want to work out as hard. And, and, and I know that I'm going to criticize on your show by saying this. I, but I, I could say that even today, I could train with bodybuilders that are competitive bodybuilders and still train as hard as they are. Maybe I can't lift as heavy weights, but I can go to failure. I can do drop sets, supersets, and train with them. Should we talk about the side effects then? What's because that? Because I, I think, I don't know why this is. I've been an athlete my whole life. And even when I was competing and went in the universe, I was still doing gladiators. I was still competing in powerlifting. I was still doing the martial arts. So I was still active and I was active and I was active and, and I'm just wondering, there was the side effect of other things. And so I think society misses the side effect of your intensity training. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, okay, let's bypass being the Mr. Olympia stage. Let's bypass a bodybuilding show for what I see that you're getting criticized. Robbie Robinson gets criticized. Um, I was down talking to Frank Zane and, and Arnold. And so you got all these old school guys saying, and I think if this is correct, it is to me, the hard work that you put in the gym may or may not win the Mr. Olympia or a show. But what it will do is win life. Yes. And the discipline that you train at that intensity relative to the cookie cutter I'm going to get on some shit, train for three months and compete and then get off it and not work out anymore. It's what I look at is, is the, the creativity of the mindset relative to the person that just phones it in like that. And I don't know if that's somewhat of the realm of today, but I meet so many pros at expos and they go, hi, I'm a IFBB pro. And I look at them and I'm just like, I wouldn't even assume you compete. <laughs> I, I, I you and, know. and I'm like, wait a minute. So where is there an effect? Because I saw Milos and Dorian talking about that. You know, Dorian was talking about he here's the studies. This is how you should train. And Milos was talking about, well, yeah, but what's the secondary stuff? And my thought is, I do like the idea of the side effect of intense training like you do, or training like Robbie does, or training that old school mentality of leave the phone at home. Get in, bust your ass, because it pays so much dividends on the outside world. Listen, I, 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 why I feel I've been successful financially is I took the intensity of training, 
you know, the discipline in dieting, you know, being regimented, you know, planning, you know, to compete for a show and took that and put it into business and was able to be a successful businessman to this day still. And you're absolutely right. You know, for me, you know, and I remember this from Joe Weider, you know, he said, if you can sit there, you could become a champion, you'll be successful in life in anything you do. If you're able to parlay that intensity in the gym and take it into anything in life. And, you know, both of us have been able to do that, you know, successfully, because if you could train in the gym to fail your balls to the wall, you're not afraid to sit there and work late hours to work, to do something, to build a business or, or do whatever you want to do, you know, in life. And, and that's where I see the importance of what training intensity does. It, 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 it parlays into other things in life that people are, don't see. And this is why, like I said, we're living in a world of everyone thinking that you just, they're entitled to things. No one's entitled to anything. You know, I sat there and criticized, and I, and I think he's a great champion, Hadi Chopin. You know, I had a picture, and I don't know if you saw it. It, get, it got like almost 4,000 comments, and not all good. They were all, they were kind of against me. People were for me. I compared Dorian's back to Hadi Chopin. Now, from the front, Hadi Chopin looked amazing. I think he wanted to still – he had the size game in winning the show. But if you saw in that Olympia, Derek Lunsford and Hadi Chopin, won, you know, both first and second – we're not the biggest guys. So the judges were awarding more shape, symmetry. You know, they were giving that. But I think Hadi was still on this, that I need to be a certain size to beat a big Rami. So from the back, I thought he was a little soft. From the front, he looked amazing. And I was criticizing Hadi, not because I'm sitting there jealous of him or hating him, because I think he's a great champion and he makes a great Mr. Olympia. A guy from Iran who, you know, has a hearing deficit, he wins the Mr. Olympia. That can't even get to the United States. It's like difficult for him to get here, you know, training in, in a country like Iran and still winning the Olympia. But I look at him and say, and my comment was, you could win several more Olympias if you improve getting more density in your back. And if you do that because you're Mr. Olympia, you're going to set the standard of getting back to the density that a Ronnie Coleman had, you know, when he won the show. And I got so much flack from that. <laughs> was any of it saying, what do you know? You're just bitter. Yes. You're an old school gay. Okay. okay yeah. The reason why, not joking, uh, Robbie Robinson got the same stuff. Yeah. I yeah. saw that Barry DeMay put something up of uh, his back and and relative to some of the guys in the Mr. Olympia Christmas, this year. Yeah, Christmas trees. Nobody yeah. has a Christmas tree. And it, so it, it, I, I, I get... I want to make sure that everybody understands that the point of my intensity discussion about, I know that you guys want to be textbook, but at the same time, there's second benefits of training intense like Rich did. And he said about it is about successful outside of the gym. Um, I even go as far as I, I train with guys that talk smack. Why life is going to talk smack to you. And I, and I love the banter because you can handle that. You can handle anything, but then going on to this, I only want to hear from Robbie Robinson, Frank Zane, from you, from Barry DeMay, from Arnold, about what they think of Mr. Olympia's now, because there's an imprint on you guys of, about that time, about the quality you guys were in. Mostly you, because you set the quality on another level when you came in and started kicking ass. So I want to hear from you guys. So I don't understand why society looks at you guys and goes, I don't want to hear from you. You had your time. You old school. I only want to hear from you. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't, it's, it's a thing with the younger generation that, that first of all, they can't take con constructive criticism and it's constructive criticism. I walk the walk. So if I'm, I'm criticized, if I'm giving you constructive criticism, it's not because I'm jealous by no means. I like to see the sport continually to improve. And I feel, you know, in, in, when it comes to, you look at the 212 and you look at the classic bodybuilders, I think those guys have great physiques. You know, they are coming in dense and hard. And you got a guy like a Chris Bumstead. It looks phenomenal. Um, Sean Clarissa ripped to the shreds, you know, but still big and hard. And I'm looking at to and see the the main Mr. Olympia improve. So if I'm giving criticism, it's not because I have any type of hate. It's more about that I love the sport and I want it to continue to improve. But it seems like that today's generation feels that if I criticize that I'm doing it because I have hate or jealousy and, and and there's no, by no means that's the reason why. 
And why is this happening? Why are these guys not as hard? Are they not dieting properly? Are they, I think a lot of it has to do with several factors. It's, you know, the training intensity, it's the diet they're on, you know, worrying about being, you know, a certain weight on stage instead of worrying about how they just look. Because as you know, Mike, when you're on stage, it's all an illusion. Oh. You can you can be a guy could be 230 and look like he's 270 compared to what you know a guy who's like 250 but who's holding water, he's not gonna look as big. So it's all an illusion. Go back and look at Danny Padillo, go back and look at Francis Benefato, you know. <laughs> so it's an illusion. It's an illusion. And I and I, I I agree with you that there is some intensity. And again, I'm gonna go with the outside effect. Um, I think most people weight lift or there's, there's a percentage of people that weight lift. I'm hoping the people that are watching this are thinking more about health and fitness and longevity. And so my belief in the studies for me, which my principles of lifting is about Wolf's law or, or Davis law, where it's the stress to the body enhances it for a long time. And so I think there's side effects people miss because I know today it's like, you don't need to go that way. You don't need to lift like that. You can just do eight reps to this point and you're golden. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, well, that's okay. That's for muscularity. But what about stress to the body? So you're still lifting like a madman on legs at 59 years old. And that's the weight range. The Use a little something to stress the body. Yep. Because then forget the show. Again, for me... I don't care about you getting on stage. I care about you being able to do this because it's for you and me. It's we, we, we love exercise because uh, that's the one thing that's keeping us around. And the studies again show what, what keeps us healthy for the longest period of time, weightlifting and stressing the body. So I want the bodies to be enhanced from weightlifting, not to win the Mr. Olympia, but at least to win life. Does that make sense? I, it, I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, challenging your body in the gym is like challenging yourself in life and, and doing this, you know, the challenge, whether it's lifting, you know, one more plate or heavier weight or doing a set where you're, you're doing a, a I love doing like giant sets, tri sets, drop sets. I like using all advanced principles to train, to get a muscle to go to failure, you know, or slow-mo reps, whatever I do, I try to always trick the body when I go to the gym and say, what am I going to do today? You know, I have training partners that train me. They're like, what are you going to do to me today? And I, tell them <laughs> about, and I never do the same thing. So they never know what's coming. You know, one day it could be a giant set with slow-mo reps, you know, six exercises, you know, 15 reps, but go slow-mo, one, two, three. One day it could be heavy weights, you know, going to failure. Maybe it's a little bit of cheat reps, but it's, you know, handling that heavy weight to get your body to then go through progressive overload. I change the I change everything around and just to get the body to get tricked to right. you know if, it, if you trick your body it's going to then what's what's going to be the result it's going to grow it's going to grow muscle it's going to get stronger it's going to do all these things you know it's going to have more endurance and that's what I do and it's it's always like I said for me it's fun to me it's not about going on stage and competing anymore it's about doing it and for me it's something that I do once I have a really great workout Mike I love training I don't know for me, training early in the morning, the first thing I do is I go to the gym and train. The rest of my day, I'm very productive. I feel great afterwards. I do miss the workout, though. I, I'm like you. I'm, I'm always four or five in the morning. And and it's I love that time because I also don't clock the time. Yeah. That's why I like early. So it's like I don't care how long the workouts are. For everybody at home going, well, how long do you work out for? I don't know. I work out and then I'm done. I'm done. Um, that's what I, sometimes an hour, sometimes it's two hours. It's about, you know, my feeling, you know, I've trained in the gym nonstop for two hours and somebody, oh, it's too long to go, but if you feel great, you can do it. And I'm telling you, it's not something where I'm wasting time. I'm in there training, boom, 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 you know, doing set after set, rep after rep, drop set, you know, training where I'm actually breathing heavy. A lot of my training that I do now is that, you know, I don't do much cardiovascular training and I still have good, you know, my heart rate's good and everything. I train very quickly, Mike. So I'll go from one exercise to another very quickly. And I'm breathing heavy, you know. I'm doing like, say, a reverse lunge supersetting with a goblet squat. But I'll do 20, 30 reps each leg and then do a goblet squat for 25 reps. You know, and, it, and, and I'm using some weight. So if you could do something like that, your heart is like 
you know, I go to my cardiologist. He goes, you're doing cardio. I said, you train with me one day, doc. You'll, <laughs> you'll see the cardio that I'm doing. <laughs> I love the fact that I, I today I think people are going to understand that I get – I understand them going, well, where's the research? Where's the stuff? There's so many factors that they can't do the research on. Yes, here's a rep range that sounds good. Here's a weight that sounds good. Here's the time in the gym that sounds good. There's bigger benefits from the things that they want to bypass. Hard work will set you up for life. That work that you put in the gym is going to keep for a long period of time like you're doing like this. And then the discipline. And being able to tell somebody which the industry is tough on right now, telling them, hey, you look good. You could be better is a yeah. good thing. And I don't understand, again, going back to the, the, the Yodas, these masters that were before us being told, I don't want to hear from you, is the dumbest thing that the fitness world could do, I think, because of the fact that you love bodybuilding more than the average Joe. You, this is, it means something to you, does it not? It, it it really does. I I still I still have a passion for bodybuilding. Listen, I'm going to the Arnold Classic this weekend. I'm not if you're going to be there, but it's the 35th anniversary. I'm the first winner. You know, I'm going to be there to see all the prior winners. And for me, I'm excited to see the show and see the you know the the new breed of competitors competing against each other. And yeah, it's still I'm I'm not only a bodybuilder. I'm a bodybuilding fan, so I still enjoy it very much. So and you know I had my day. You know. I can say I did very well coming three times second place, winning the Arnold Classic, winning Mr. World, you know, winning European Grand Prix champions. I, I did the best I could do, you know, with my with my physique. And I, you know, I don't I, I have nothing to prove. I do it now because I enjoy it. I'm and I'm still a fan. And this is why, you know, I'm still here with you talking about bodybuilding and training because it's something that I do that to me it's it's fun. It's it's my enjoyment, you know. You said something today. The carbohydrates is a good thing. And I believe the only reason I'm here today is because I've stayed with carbs my whole career and throughout my age that I never ran away from carbs. I never was guy, oh, I'm just going to cut the carbs out and stay lean yeah. so I can do these movies and stay lean all the time. I, I completely go off season, keep the carbs in and make sure that my body is recovered with you today. Is there something that you're still doing today that you find is keeping you healthy at 59, allowing you to train when it comes to nutrition instead of running away from something? Well, I, you know, I said earlier, you know, I, I do stay away from all processed foods. Um, you know, still, you know, I still eat, you know, whole grain breads. If I don't sit there and buy, you know, Wonder Bread. I sit there and buy whole grain What's bread. Wonder Wonder Bread, kid? Yeah. Come on, we grew up with that. I know, but that's <laughs> I, I, I'll eat an Ezekiel bread. I'll eat a brown rice. I'll have sweet potatoes. I'll eat oatmeal. Those are my those are my carbs. I'll eat, I'll eat very healthy carbs. You know, I'm not sitting there over carbing. You know, I'm looking at what my physique looks like. You know, and using like I told you before is you know having at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight, making sure I'm getting you know, fats from fish. I'm always eating nuts. So I eat an all around healthy diet, making sure I'm getting my vegetables um, and some fruits. And and that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to stay, you know, live a healthy lifestyle, and get checkups from a doctor, you know, at least every six months going to a doctor and getting blood work done to make sure that what I'm doing is working. And it is working. Like I, I, I have perfect cholesterol now, you know, I don't have any type of issues, you know, my prostate is checked. So I have any issues with that. I've had my colon checked twice already. Um, and overall, just, you know, living a healthy lifestyle, you know, through exercise, I think combination of eating right and, you know, eating all, all you know, the right foods, staying away from processed foods are, are number one. And, and a lot of people just aren't, aren't able to do that. They have to have that processed food. And let me tell you something, I'm Italian, you know, every so often, you know, I can have a piece of pizza, you know, I have a son just like you, very, you know, very young. I have a three-year-old who likes eating pizza. So I'll have a slice with him and I'll do that once in a while. But um, overall, it's just, you know, living, you know, walking the walk and that's living a healthy. How would you tell a kid right now, a teenager or, or a 20 year old that would like to become uh, 
a influencer, I guess you would say, in the health and fitness world, how would you tell them is the guide or an easy way to guide through nutrition as this stage? Would you stay with the one one gram of uh, body weight for protein? I, I pretty much would. Um, you know, look what type of metabolism they are. I mean, because there are some people that do well on a keto diet. Um, I know Mark Bell does well on a keto diet. He, you know, he, he pushes that. I just know a lot of people do not do well. You know, they think that carbs are evil, and I don't believe carbs are evil. Um, if you have a good metabolism, you know, carbs will not be evil. And having them in your diet are still it, it, they're, they're still essential. You know, they convert to glycogen. If, as long as, you know, when you, when you take in or process carbohydrates, A, they can transport into the fat, or B, they can transport into glycogen, you know, into the muscle by being converted to glucose. Those are the two pathways that carbohydrates can take in your body. So, of course, if you're training hard, why will those carbs store as fat? They're going to be used to be stored as glycogen in the muscle, you know. But if you're just sitting around, of course, if you're sitting there eating eat any type of carbs and you're not doing anything and you're not active, of course, those carbs will then shuttle into and get converted to fat. But if you're doing if you're doing the exercise, and this is where I'm seeing people, you know, I had a girl totally natural. She was 114. She's up to 132. And this was all in four months. And just by changing her diet and having her eat complex carbs and, you know, she's posting and they're going, Rich's got you on steroids. And this girl's totally natural. And she actually lost a percentage of body fat. She's at 132 from 114. And her body fat for a woman, which is pretty good, is like at 16%. So, and she's looking great. But I, I was able to take her calories from like 12, 1400 to almost 3000 calories. You know, this is a girl who wants to compete in wellness. When I look at men eating 2,400 calories, 2,200 calories, I go, you're eating too little. You're eating like a bird. And you're getting your body acclimated to those low calories. And then once you get used to those low calories, what happens to you? Your body's not going to grow and it's just going to stay stagnant. So, Mike, what I do for people and I put people on diets is I slowly, progressively, you can't take someone from 2,200 calories and get them to eat 4,000 calories. You can't do that. It's got to be a slow progression. And I'm able to do that with, you know, clients to slowly increase their calories. And Mike, I never, you know, I've always, I, I never had time to help people. And now I feel it's like a necessity to help people. And I've been helping people now with diets and training because I feel this, just like you and I, we have a lot of knowledge throughout the years. And for us, honestly, for me, it's like brushing my teeth. And when I talk about this to these younger generation, like, how do you know all this? <laughs> so I've been doing it my whole life, you know? So it just comes second nature to me. But I sit there helping people and just tweaking what they're doing and slowly, progressively increasing their caloric intake, both protein, complex carbs, you know, essential fats, and watching their diet go from like a guy going from like 22, 2400 that thought they would get fat to eating now close to 4,000 calories, gaining 10 pounds of muscle, and not using any anabolic steroids, just totally natural. You can do it and still get leaner. And this is just doing everything progressively slow um, and proper, being patient, increasing intensity in the gym to train harder, you know, instead of sitting there and, you know, doing a curl and see, as soon as you cheat a little bit, oh, you're doing it wrong. You're not going to grow. You know, you're not going to grow. Okay. Bullsh you know that. You, you, you know, I watch you train. You're an animal and you're, you know, you're, you're in your 50s still training like an animal. And you've been doing this like me since you were a teenager and you're still doing it. So that proves something we're doing is right. You know? <laughs> because of the age that we started and wanted to be champions, I don't think we realized because you got there, you know, you were boom, 20 years old. You know, you're this kid that's just freaking crushing things. But at the same time, there was an urgency, but an understanding that it would take a long time as well because you're still here today where so many have uh not even been able to uh you're still relevant you're still so relevant and so somebody sought after to talk to uh and and get your knowledge from and so there's something that separated you from others and i think it's the the intensity that you had as a youngster but the understanding that you ain't giving this up no and there there wasn't that switch where it's like all right i'm done I'm done with this. Um, 
And I love that warrior mentality in you. So that's really one thing that I want to ask you because I hear this a lot and I don't get it. Um, why are you that in shape or dieting that hard or training that hard when you're not doing the Mr. Olympia, when you're not getting on stage? Why do you do this, Mike? doesn't make sense to me. And so I have my own answer, but why do you go in at 59 and push the edge? Because you don't... I know you keep saying, and you don't have to, not to me, you don't, not to my viewers, you don't, you train smart. We know you train smart. And again, we're going to still push it to the edge to where it's nothing's guaranteed, but we push it. Why do you push it to that edge when you could just go in and do the eight reps and the moderate weight and not the drop sets? And why 20 year olds? Why do you train with 30 year olds and 20 year olds? Why do you do that? Why do you pick a fight? Because that's what it is. Yeah. You and I still pick fights with those guys at that age to go in there and tussle with them and try to burn them out. Why do you do it? For me, for me it's it's challenging myself that I enjoy doing it. You know, training in the gym and training to failure. It's it's actually it, it gives me a euphoric high. You know, it to me it's like it's like my own type of drugs that I'm doing when I go to the gym. I train with someone younger because of I, I I don't there's not many guys maybe Robbie Robinson he you know because he's 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 an animal too and it's unbelievable the way he looks I, I even have a deeper respect for a guy that's in his 70s to look like him shredded but there's very few of those people around like you and I so I have no choice but to train with somebody younger to you know a teach them my you know my art and, and and hopefully impose into them the you know my philosophies to help them in life but b because they are you know younger and have you know supposedly more energy that i could sit there and see how i can challenge myself to push myself because if i could kill that kid then i know <laughs> that i'm doing the right thing that i'm training hard enough and and to me it's it's just fun you know i like doing it mentally it's fun for me to sit there in the gym and, you know, I have, I have guys that train and they're like, okay, what are we doing now, Rich? I said, then we come up and say, okay, we're going to do a tri set, this, this, and this, and we're not going to, you know, <laughs> we're going to do a drop set after it. And, and it's just, it, to me, it's just fun. Mentally, it's something that's fun for me. Uh, it doesn't have to be that I can be, uh, compete in the show. And I still like to, you know, there's times when I, you know, I can, you know, relax a little bit. And then right now coming into the season, into the spring and summer, I'm stepping up my training to get back in shape for, you know, the summer, the spring and the summer. And, you know, I just enjoy it. I go through cycles that I enjoy doing. And I'm always training hard, but there are times when I train even harder, you know, to cycle my body. Right now I'm getting really great improvements. If you know, one of the things that retired me was I herniated a or actually a ruptured a disc in my neck. I, I did not do surgery until last year, last July, and and had a disc replacement in my neck. Okay. So that put me back that I couldn't train as much because it was actually the nerve that was blocked on my right side. Well, I've been training consistently and, and since July, and little by little, it's coming back better and better and better. Wow. And now it's exciting for me because I had this – since I retired. And now it's like, wow, you know, my doctor goes, you can be 80, 90%. I said, why not a hundred percent? My right arm back to the way it was. So it's, it's challenging, but for me, it's fun to see the slow progression and improvement that I'm getting now that that nerve is not blocked. And it's been, you know, in modern medicine, I have to, I have to applaud the modern medicine. I, you know, I, before they used to just fuse your neck, yeah. I got an artificial disc. So that I have total mobility in my neck that I can do anything and that nerve is totally free and that's this huge. is why I do it I do it because I you know I'm challenging my body to see how I can continually to you know continue to improve I could do nothing and sit there and let my arm just atrophy and you know get a, a dad gut and you know I still love having abs you know in, in 59 I still have abs and intercostals and you know it was a lot of times it shows I pull my shirt to say I still have abs you know, and, and it's fun for me. I still love training, you know, legs, back, all these different body parts. You know, I'm slowly improving. And because of modern medicine, I'm able to continue to, to improve. That um, making sure the body's good, make sure your blood levels are healthy, um, making sure you got motivation and goals. And I love the fact that you said this, and I wish people would do this more. The goal that you made is such a small goal, but it's huge to you. So your, your goal is... The neck, the arm, 
let's bring it back to 100. And people, I think, sometimes get so focused, taking us back to the original statement is, uh, no, I'm not getting on. Well, I'm guest posing and stuff, but you don't need to be slice slice. But for me, I want to be ridiculous because that's my goal. My little, little things keep you alive and keep you fighting. It's like the we go to Venice and, and watch basketball or play. And you got the 50 year old, 60 year olds out there playing with the 20 year olds. Those are the guys I want to hang with because those are the guys that are still living life. Or you go roll a jujitsu and you got the 60 year olds going against the 20 year olds. There's got to be some kind of fight still in you. Uh, those that's the kind of individuals I like being around. And it could be it could be physical or it could be um, a bettering yourself in other ways. But I love that stuff and I love that in you. And you're right. Robbie Robinson broke my hand yesterday almost because we were lifting. And he gets mad. Does he have that passion still? It's so great. It's That's great training with somebody like that. That's just amazing. I, I mean, I'm still seeing pictures and videos of this guy like shredded at how old is he? Seven. He's 20 years older than us, kid. Yeah, he's and and you know, you know what was amazing? I he was my boyhood hero when I was growing up as a you know, as a teenager following Robbie Robinson, I, I got the, the, the pleasure of actually having as like you as a training partner that we trained together for, you know, European Grand Prix champions that we travel in Europe. And I got to compete against him. He was my hero. And then afterwards, when I retired, he was still competing, winning the Masters Olympia and, and still looking amazing. And so he definitely has, you know, the uh, secret to longevity for sure that he continues looking the way he does, you know, shredded, you know, still peak biceps better than ever than 20 year olds. It's the, the uh, one thing that we always talk about my team and stuff is that when he walks into that gym, you got a stallion walking in. He doesn't walk in, you know, slow and he walks in tippy toe up, ready to go, lean forward. Let's go. What do we got? I want my old back back. I got to uh, guest pose at the Emerald Cup uh, a couple of years back, and I said, hey, so I'm training with Robbie. You know it would be really cool is that you have us both guest pose. Uh, and so I got to guest pose with Robbie, both of us on stage, and I'm like, Robbie, we're going out into the audience. And so it was so cool to be on with my childhood, one of my heroes, yeah. and, and guest pose with him and then go out into the audience and just travel with him like that. And so I could understand you and I growing up with somebody like that that was already – Back in 74, 75 at the pinnacle. Yeah. So amazing. it's unreal, man. I love it, brother. I thank you so much for touching base today. At the end of the day, eat, train, keep the passion. It's kind of the protocol. That's what it is. What a savage. Man, I hope you guys understand. Uh Understand and take in uh, the knowledge that he has. Uh, it's pretty cool seeing somebody that I've known for so long still doing it at, at this level. Um, and what I mean by that is just the training at this level. And he still has that passion. So you guys ask me a lot of the times, uh, what is it that keeps you motivated? Again, this stuff is, is something bigger than motivation. It's just we really, really love – the workouts and it's it hits us deeper it hits us emotionally much deeper than hey i want to i want to get in shape and so take that away from this make sure to follow him he's doing a lot of great stuff and again i understand that maybe it hurts people's feelings on what the old school the guys have to say but it's really it's because they love this so much they want the very best from the individual i think in, in my take, and Jeffrey, you can correct me if I'm wrong. You sit there from the outside world watching in. When Robbie talks about it or when when Frank Zane talks about it or like Rich Gaspari talks about it, it's because they really want it to be the very, very best. And, yeah, it's that passion for what they have in this health and fitness world. All right, guys? So that's, the, that's one of the great legends. I'm so glad I got to talk to him and Lee Haney and these other individuals um next week we are going live with frank zane so you guys are going to have some incredible incredible information or questions please put your comments down below what do you want me to ask frank zane this would be uh tremendously helpful for me i have my questions but i really want to answer or ask the questions that you guys have for him all right all right
who's the uh, who's the big blonde haired guy in Street Fighter? Ken. Ken. This is Ken signing out. Take care, guys.